Hello, Galactic Werewolf Warriors. It's Mr. Simmons. I'm on my back deck. If you look very deep into the distance, you can see the Vashon Ferry Terminal with a couple of ferries. And it's a little chilly out here, but luckily I'm wearing this very warm wig and blanket combination. I hope you are cozy. I'm sorry if you're sad after chapter 25 yesterday. Um, I won't give it away in case you're trying to read chapter 26 before you read chapter 25, but you'll probably figure it out pretty quickly. Ah, <sighs> poor Rantu. Chapter 26. That winter, I did not go to the reef at all. I ate the things I had stored and I left the house only to get water at the spring. It was a winter of strong winds and rain and wild seas that crashed against the cliffs. So I would not have gone out much even if Rantu had been there. During that time I made four snares from notched branches. In the summer once when I was on my way to the place where the sea elephants lived, I had seen a young dog that looked like Rantu. He was running with one of the packs of the wild dogs, and though I caught only a glimpse of him, I was sure that he was Rantu's son. He was larger than the other dogs, and he had heavier fur and yellow eyes, and he ran with a graceful stride like Rantu's. In the spring I planned to catch him with the snares that I was making. The wild dogs came to the headland often during that winter, now that Rantu was gone. And when the worst of the storms were over, I set the snares outside the fence and I baited them with fish. I caught several of the dogs the first time, but not the one with the yellow eyes, and since I was afraid to handle them, I was forced to let them free. I made more snares and I set these again, but while the wild dogs came close, they would not touch the fish. I did catch a little red fox, which bit me when I took her out of the snare. But she soon got over her wildness, and then she would follow me around in the yard, begging for abalone. She was very much of a thief. When I was away from the house, she always found some way to get into the food, no matter how well I hid it. So I had to let her get go back to the ravine. Often, though, she would come at night, and she would scratch at the fence, asking for food. I could not catch the young dog with the snare, and I was about to give up trying to when I thought of the tulashe weed, which we sometimes used to catch fish in the tide pools. It was not really a poison, but if you put it in the water, the fish would turn over on their backs and float. I do that sometimes in the bathtub. That was just a uh, text to self connection that I made. Yes. I remember this weed, and I dug somewhere it grew on the far side of the island. I broke it up into small pieces, which I dropped in the spring where the wild dogs drank. I waited all day, and at dusk the pack came down to the spring. They drank their fill of the water, but nothing happened to them, or not much. They frisked around for a while, and as I watched them from the brush, then they trotted away. I then remembered Zukal, which some of the men of our tribe used, and is made from ground up seashells and wild tobacco. I made a big bowl of this, mixing it with water, and I put that in the spring, and then I hid in the brush and I waited. The dogs came at dusk. They sniffed the water and they backed off and they looked at each other, but at last they began to drink. Soon afterwards they began to walk around in circles, and suddenly they all lay down and went to sleep. There were nine of them lying there by the spring. In the dim light it was hard to tell the one I wanted to take home, but I finally found him. He was snoring as if he had just eaten a big meal. I picked him up and I hurried along the cliff, being frightened all the way that he would wake up before I reached the headland. I pulled him through the opening under the fence, and I tied him to it with a thong, and I left food beside him to eat and some fresh water. Before long, he was on his feet, gnawing through the thong. He howled and he ran about the yard while I cooked my supper. All night he howled, but at dawn, when I went out of the house, he was asleep. While he lay there by the fence sleeping, I thought of different names for him, trying first one and then another, saying them over to myself. At last, really because he looked so much like his father, I called him Rantu Aru, which means son of Rantu. In a short time, he made friends with me. He was not so large as Rantu, but he had his father's thick coat and the same yellow eyes. Often, when I watched him chasing gulls on the sand spit or on the reef barking at the otter, I forgot that he was not Rantu. 
We had many happy times that summer, fishing and going to Tall Rock in our canoe, but more and more now I thought of Tutok and my sister Ulape. Sometimes I would hear their voices in the wind, and often, when I was on the sea, I heard them in the waves that lapped softly against the canoe. <laughs> I love you. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.